Hello, it's me again. So uh, what this video is about, we're finally going to uh, take the synthetic data we trained on the Tau Toolkit and we're going to export it to Xavier NX and run it. So, but before we do that, I've got to kind of go over some of the things uh, that we did with the Isaac Sim synthetic data uh, generator because we need to make some changes. So, uh, you know, I've got this. We can close this. I've already made, as you can see, I've made a couple uh, images here of forklifts. So one of the first things we have to do is um, when, the, when the generator generated the images before, it made them like this. It, it, when it, and it did the annotation, it created them like this. But before it had a three in there. And when the three was in there, well, what happened was the... Uh, This forklift, it wouldn't get an AP score. It would go to zero. So I kind of, I kind of worried about that. It didn't seem to affect anything, but like I, I didn't like it. I wanted it to generate an AP score. So to do that, um, the uh, there was a three there, and it has to be a zero. So to do that, you have to go to uh, the Kitty Rider in the Onivirk Isaac Synthetic Utilities. So you go to Local Share OV Package Isaac Sim 2021 Extension Onivirk Isaac Synthetic Utilities Omni Isaac Synthetic Riders. And that's this right here and you go to the kitty one. So what happens is down here down I uh, sorry I don't have my numbers on the side. What happens is this is when it comes it has a three in there. You need to get rid of that three and put the zero on there, and then it'll generate the annotations correctly. So that's one thing you need to do. And uh, another thing that you might want to do is uh, these are the images that I that I, I generated and did all the testing on. So I noticed that if you want to do a, a synthetic image, you need to make a, a large variety of images for it to actually detect a real world uh, image of a synthetic. Uh, image and I'll show you that later. So here's the images I did and what I also did is I kind of wanted to, to put them with um, as you notice this is the uh, the image data set that comes with uh, that use a lot do a lot of testing with the towel toolkit so I wanted to implement that and the, the, the forklift data set together so to do that I had to format the image in the same uh, set as this so to do that and this is only if you want to take an a image you're making and uh, put it with another data set. So you have to make them the same uh, size. So to do that with somewhere else, you would go to the offline generation.py application. And uh, you would go up at the very top here. And you would reset your width and height. So I set it to 1248384, which is the same as... Uh, these images so I generated them in the same height and width as the other ones so it was much easier to uh, mix the data set together so that's pretty much what I did so uh, and then what I did is I just used the towel toolkit to run uh, um, the the training so what I've done is I've done the uh, YOLO 4 Jupyter notebook uh, training and then what happens is once you're all done with it, you come down here and you run here the model export. Now I you, you can run this one right here, but I ran this one down here because this is the one that you're going to need if you're going to transfer it over to the uh, uh, Jetson Nano or Xavier NX. And when you do this, it generates this folder. See there, there. It generates this export folder, and in it, it contains the calibration brin, the calibration tensor, the labels that we're going to use. Use those, and then uh, in for config.txt. And this is just some 
the parameters that you, in, you have to insert into uh, the, uh, the 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 Jetson Xavier NX uh, application, and then you have this, and this it'll gen the ETLT, and this is what will generate the engine. So what happens? You'll take this uh, file and you'll export it to the Jetson Xavier NX. So that's what I'm going to do now. So the next time you see me. I'm going to have it all set up in the my Xavier. So we moved over to the Xavier NX and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, file, the output file that we got from the Tal Toolkit and put it in the Xavier NX. So the place we want to put it was in Models, uh, right here, Tal Pre-Trained Models. YOLO 4, well, you can, whatever one you used, but since I've used YOLO 4, it's going to go here. And I'll show you in the setup file how you can point to all of these. So I went to YOLO 4. Now I put it here, and generally it should go in here, but I put it in here because I didn't want to mess with this. So there's the export file that we brought over from uh, the TAL toolkit. And it has everything uh, we need here. So, so that's there. Now the next thing you do is we need to point everything to it. So what you do is you're going to go to the configs right here. And there will be a Tau pre-trained models uh, folder. Now when you get this, this will probably be empty. So what you do is you got to go to the, in here there's a readme uh, folder or page. And that will tell you how to download everything in here and how to set things up and, and a lot of things that, that you want to do. So what you need to run this to get all this stuff in here. Now, so the, what we're going to do is we're going to use this. Let's see which one. We're going to use the demonstration DeepStream app source one detection models text. So that's the one we're going to use, and this is what we're going to use. So here it is, right here. And what we've done is, uh, so we basically this is you've you've seen this before. This is how you set up your your you know uh, how, how you want to set your configurey, your sinks, and all that stuff. And but this has so since this is set up to run the Tal Toolkit output, there's some changes in here that you will, will, will want to do. So first of all, I I got a MP4 file that. Um, that it has like forklifts in it and all that stuff. So I'm pointing it at that. So we're going to run actually a, a, a little MP4 file that shows forklifts. Run it real life forklifts, not synthetic ones. I basically left this the same, left all this the same. Um, basically, all this is the same. Now, here's what it is this is where you go back and uh, these, this is where you choose the config file text you're going to run like here's a list of all the ones you can choose and they're all the ones that are in here so we're going to run the yellow v4 text folder right there so we're going to point it at that and then and let's see and then right here this is the tracker we're going to use so we can i've chosen this tracker and i mean i i generally use the uh yeah, that's the one I use pretty much. Oh, no, I use the accuracy one generally. But we'll, we'll use this one for now. And basically, I left everything else the same. The only plate things I changed was, like, I added this, chose this. And I chose uh, the YOLO 4 text. And then I added my own uh, MP4 file, and I pointed to it. So what happens is, is this is going to call this uh, text file to actually run. So that's in here also. So to get that, we'll go over here. This is the config info primary YOLO v text file. So now this is where you where you have to make some quite a few changes. So what I did was, uh, it generally looks like this when you get it, but you need to make your changes. Like for example, right here, this info config text. These are a lot of things like the key, the network type, classes, all this stuff right here. Is, is all goes in here, you know, like here, it tells you kind of what to do, the key, to throw the key in there and stuff like that. And then the other thing you do is then you got to point all these all these selections to the proper uh, in, uh, things. So you can see I've had it pointed to this calibration bin, 
this one's pointed to the ETLT folder. Um, the, the labels.txt, that's, that's already down in here in this thing. I just made sure that, uh, let's see, label v4 labels.txt right there. I just made sure those la labels were the same as these labels. And then there's a calibration tensor file, the calbin, that's all pointing to it. And then another thing, it, what it does is it's pointing to this, when it generates the engine, it's going to build the engine out of this. And then it's going to place the engine file in here. So if you want to, once you build this once and the engine files in here, you just need to put the name of the engine file like right there. And, and you won't have to go through the rebuild process every time. Other than that, I think I left everything the same. And, and right here, this is how you set your threshold. Like if you want it to be more sensitive, you, you make the lo number lower. In fact, I, I, you know, I got it down to 001 and it's super sensitive. If you want to go higher, 0.9, it doesn't go over one, but that this sets the sensitivity of the threshold of what you're gonna run. So basically, we've got all this set up. Um, what we've done is, it's over here. Um, so we've uh, CD into this folder, Tau pre-trained models, which is this. And we're gonna run Deepstream app C, Deepstream app source one detection model, which is in here, and it's gonna call the uh, config infer primary text folder which is right right here and then what it's going to do it's going to use these is information to build the engine and then it'll start running so let's just go ahead and run this now it's going to take a little bit to build the engine so i might skip over it Okay, as you can see, like it sees fork looks pretty good. It actually is pretty good. It 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 took just synthetic data, and we we were able to make it recognize just real forklifts. Now it's going to take some fine tuning. I admit, I think I need to do a little more variety in the synthetic data. But what it did is it generated the engine up here, so it's running off this engine right now. So uh, and then, like I say, if you want to make it more or less sensitive you can do that adjustment right here in this uh, this folder so but as you can see it's it's seeing forklifts like i say it just needs a little more tweaking um it, it shows it'll pick up people here in a minute too like i say if you want to um see pedestrian forklift forklift and it picks up all the forklifts in the back you know so it's it, it's actually doing a really good job for synthetic, for, for training on synthetic data and, and recognizing real world objects, I, I think it's pretty good. Like I said, it'll take some really fine tuning. You have to make a large variety of synthetic data to really get it to recognize real world objects. A large variety of, of like twisting them and colors and all kinds of things like that. And it will mesh with a uh, uh, live, live picture databases too. It, it'll do that so you can mix it all together. Like I say, like if you, if you want to, it's built the engine right here. Now, if you want to run this again and you don't want to wait it to build, wait for it to build the engine again, is you just have to point this right here, right here. You want to take the engine and just point it at this right here. And then what happens is it won't, it won't go to the trouble to build all the engine, build the engine like it, 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 it knows to look for an engine first. And if there isn't an engine there, then it goes to build one. And another thing too is like there there's another uh function you can do that you can actually build an engine just on its own but like this does it right here there's no need once you do this an engine's built and you can just you don't have to rebuild it again so like i say um see so picks up pedestrians and forklifts like you know a little more fine tuning in, in it and it should just work just fine all right well well thank you very much i hope hope this helps bye